Hi, I'm Lucas Kwiatkowski, and before I get into this Amazon PPC video, I just wanted to go through a little background. So I've been an Amazon PPC consultant for a little over three years now. I'm not a seller, so I'm not going to tell you how I increased my sales and decreased my ACOS. I'm going to talk about my clients and how I work through these things for my clients and how I have so much access to different accounts and kind of the advanced tips and tricks that I've seen when setting up the PPC campaigns. So what I really want to do is do a deep dive on each individual part of PPC because it's changing so much. Um, you know, every six months the interface is changing, the keywords are changing, and the features are changing. So it's something you really got to keep up with. And the first thing I think the first step that everyone needs to do is set up an automatic campaign. You think the automatic campaigns are pretty basic, but there's a lot more that goes into it. Again, I'm going to start with kind of a deep dive in the automatics from creation to then kind of looking at the analysis of what you can do with them. So the first thing here is, I mean, when you set up an automatic campaign, the first question is always a suggested bid. So I've, I've added a product here and it says the suggested bid is 86 cents with a range of 46 to 275. One good tip here right off the bat is this range is actually percentiles. So this 46 cent, cent bid is the 25th percentile of all bids. And the 275 is only the 75th percentile. So technically, if you want to win this bid 100% of the time, you need to take this highest bid and raise it by another 25%. And that's what's going to win you the auction. Now. Amazon's gotten a lot better with these. They're actually changing very, very often. So, I mean, these, these bids change every day, but that's just where they get these numbers from and they give you this suggested bid. So when you're just starting off, a lot of people, you know, they, they don't know what to put for their first bid and a lot of them go as high as possible. For automatic campaigns, you can definitely go a little higher. It's okay because you want to get that data to start with. And the higher you go, the more relevant your ad is going to be it's going to be on page one or it's going to be you know in front of your competitors so there's there's not a exact science to the to the suggested bid when you're first starting off but again if you want to be as aggressive as possible don't do this 275 you got to go slightly higher than that at about 25 percent higher than that but if you want to just get kind of more of a slow drip of keywords coming in I would say maybe use this suggested bid or use somewhere right in between here. So you're in the 50th percentile. Now, another good strategy, if you have previous PPC data, if you have other products that have launched, if you have other automatic campaigns that are running with similar products, you need to look at that cost per click and that data. And to look at that previous cost per click, that'll give you an idea of perhaps what bid you should set for this campaign. So use your previous data when setting this up. Um, and then, then again, just, just watch it for the first few days to, to see what budget you're hitting. So that's really the idea for, for the keyword bid when you set them up. Now, when setting up an automatic campaign, you want to let it run for at least a week without touching it because there's plenty of stuff that happens in that week. It takes a while for the data to come in. So just set a budget, know what you're willing to spend and set that. And then after that week, you want to open up the search term report. Now the search term report, again, this is all the data that comes in from your automatic campaign that you can't see on the front end. And this is what you get from a search term report. You get you get individual keywords and then you get ASINs. Now just another background, this is a, a bamboo garden fountain. So that's that's the kind of keywords, you see bamboo fountain here. That's the kind of keywords that are gonna pop up for this product. Now, a lot of people aren't sure what this means when you see these ASINs in your search term report. These are competitor ASINs. And what this means is that your product, so I've, I've typed in a, a bamboo fountain here, and what those ads are, are these sponsored products related to this item. These are all automatic campaigns. Okay, so on this ASIN, if your ad was showing up, your ad would show up for this exact ASIN, and that would populate in your search term report. 
this is why automatics are so important because manual campaigns cannot reach this area. And this is this is some pretty valuable real estate. You, you know, you scroll down and it's right here. It's the first thing after frequently bought together and you can kind of scroll. It's a very clean, it's a very clean page. There's usually a lot of relevant products. So again, this is what you're seeing when you're seeing this ASIN. This means that you're popping up on all of these competitors in this in this uh, sponsored products right here. Now you can't add these as negatives. It's something you, you uh, Amazon just doesn't allow. So if they don't convert, unfortunately, you just need to lower your bid. But if these are converting, these are a good thing to look at the actual brand names of these products so if you're con converting on this ASIN here you want to go into Amazon you want to search for this ASIN and then maybe in your manual campaign you want to bid on the brand name of this ASIN because you know you've gotten some good sales from it the ACOS is 15 percent so this is just a, a really good way to see what your competition is and see how you're converting against other competitors products now, other than that, I mean, the, the automatic is pretty self-explanatory with the keywords that pop in here. But a lot of people ask for the metrics that you need to look at when you're looking at your search term report. One of the most important metrics is click-through rate. This one right here, the CTR stands for click-through rate. It's how many people are clicking on your product compared to how many people are seeing it. So the higher the click-through rate, the more relevant the, the ad is going to be. And again, this is one of the most important metrics that Amazon takes into account for relevancy of your ads. Now, sometimes you're going to see a very, very high click-through rate with no sales. A lot of times this happens if there's not a lot of clicks. So you need to make sure that there's at least enough clicks. So here you can see with this... 7,100 impressions, 52 clicks. It's a 0.73 click-through rate, which which is pretty high. The number I kind of look for is 0.3 or 0.2 is is pretty low. That's somewhere in the cutoff range where the click-through rate is pretty low. It means it's not very relevant. But again, you need to make sure that you get a, a decent sample size of clicks. So so 10 clicks, you know, for for this keyword here with the 6% click-through rate. It's, it's really not that much data, so I would let that keep running and let it keep going because the biggest thing with the automatics is the negative keywords, and that's when a keyword populates enough and it gets enough clicks in your report, you need to make sure to add it as a negative keyword. And then again, there's two types of neg negative keywords. So if you see something in your search term report that is an exact keyword, you know, one, one search term that isn't converting, but it's still somewhat relevant to your product, that's when you want to add that as a negative exact keyword. So negative exact, let's see if we can find one here. So let's say we go to... Again, there's not too many good examples here, and there's not all that much data, but we want to go to pond statues. This isn't a statue, it's a fountain. So you take this pond statues, you add it as a negative exact, okay? And again, this is this is isn't that a uh, campaign, this is another campaign I created, but just to kind of show you the, the process here. So eventually, I mean, the longer an automatic campaign runs, you're going to have, you could potentially have hundreds of negative keywords in here. Because the longer it runs, the more keywords Amazon is going to find for it. And you need to stay on top of that to make sure those keywords are relevant. Now, going one step further is a negative phrase. These can be very dangerous, but also very powerful because you can knock out whole groups of keywords. So here again, we added pond statues. Now, maybe we want to add, going off of this, we want to add water statues or garden statues. These could be, for negative exact, these could be possible keywords that would pop up the longer this campaign runs. But if you see you're coming back week after week and there's more statue keywords that are popping into this fountain campaign, that's when you go to phrase and you add statue. Okay, because what this is going to do is this is going to this is going to add a negative keyword for 
any keyword or any, sorry, any search term involving statues. So it's just a lot more powerful because you can knock out 50 to 100 keywords at a time. And oftentimes when there is all of these search terms in here that have one click, you're not going to see a lot of these, but these can really, really add up. So say you're, you, again, you're going to have all of these statue keywords here. They're getting one click and they could, there could be 20 different search terms that have one click. So you want to knock all of those out. And just another tip on that. I added statue singular. This will also fire on statues plural. So negative phrase, it goes to singular and plural. And similarly with the exact, it goes to singular and plural. That's always that's also something that's a little tricky that you gotta look out for. Say pawn statue is converting, but pawn statues is not. You need to think about that a little more because if you add it as the plural, it's gonna knock out the singular. So that's really all you need to do with your automatic campaigns is go through here. There's there's two types of search terms. You got the ASINs, which gives you a lot of good input, and then you've got the search terms, which you either want to add, add as negatives or move into your manual campaigns, which I'll, I'll dive into at another time. And then as far as the creation of your automatic campaigns go, you really want to have two types of automatics. You want to have one automatic campaign for each individual SKU. Even if it's a variation, split that up. So if it's a size variation, have one campaign for each different size because they're going to react differently. It's going to get you more impressions. It's going to give you better data if you split them up. And then another thing that a lot of people don't do, which I see great returns on, is you need to have one automatic campaign for all of your products in one ad group. So you set up this campaign. It can be a lower budget. Say it's 10 to $20 a day. And the bid also needs to be lower than all your other, other automatic campaigns. So you group all of your SKUs into one ad group, put a very low bid, say uh, somewhere in between 10 to 20 cents, and let that run. That's going to be what I like to call low-hanging fruit. You're going to get impressions on maybe some third or fourth page of Amazon, but they're still going to be relevant impressions, and they're going to be very, very cheap clicks. So make sure you're doing that with your automatics. You're having targeted ones for each individual variation, and then you're having one that is, again, the, the low-hanging fruit that encompasses all of your SKUs. And always check back regularly. After that initial aggressive one to two weeks of running this automatic, you can start to adjust that bid to hit the metrics you want to. But other than that, this is really just a great research tool that a lot of people don't utilize enough. And especially these competitor ASINs, they give you so much great data. So that's, that's pretty much it on the automatic campaigns. Manuals, there's a lot more that goes into it. I'm going to get in, into those into another video, but let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer.